What's up, everyone? I'm back on Choices. Gonna be doing the Royal Romance, as usual. Back in your room, you're about to prepare for bed when there's a knock at your door. You answer it. Maxwell, hey! I know it's late, but there's someone you should meet. Bertrand, this is the one I was telling you about. Sirena! Maxwell steps aside to let in an imposing man with a stern expression. This is the girl you've chosen to represent our house? Yep, nailed it, right? Sirena, this is my older brother, Bertrand. It's nice to meet you, Bertrand. The proper way to address a duke is your grace. Oh, I'm so sorry, your grace, or Maxwell didn't mention the stick up your ass. I'll say I'm so sorry, your grace. At least it looks like you can be trained. Hey, I'm not your pet. He doesn't mean it like that. <laughs> Maxwell, a word with you in private. Bertrand grabs Maxwell's arm and hauls him out of your room. He slams the door behind him, but you can faintly hear the voices through it. It sounds like they're talking about me! I should listen at the door or give them privacy. I'll just listen at the door. You press your ear to the door. That's the girl you picked to represent our family? Yeah, that's Sirena. Liam really hit it off with her when they met at the restaurant for his bachelor party. She was our waitress. A waitress? You brought a waitress? I knew I shouldn't have trusted you. We could have had our pick of any unsponsored duchess or countess in half of Europe. Well, sure. But like I said, she and, Li she and Liam have a lot of, you know, chemistry. I think he really likes her. I know you probably don't care, but she can make him really happy. Like, I've never seen him so happy kind of happy. Shouldn't Liam have a shot at love like that, even if he is the prince? Spare me your sentimentality. You'd better hope that this waitress doesn't ruin everything. The door's thrown open, nearly smacking you in the face. Oh! You were listening to everything, weren't you? Listening in, yeah, and I don't like what I heard, or I would never. I'd be like, yeah, and I don't like what I heard. Perfect. A waitress with no manners. Look, you're the ones who invited me here. If you're so unhappy with me, just get another girl. No, you can't do that. We already said you are our pick, so if you go, we've got no one. Maxwell is unfortunately correct. We're stuck with you. Perhaps Maxwell didn't fully explain this to you, but if our house puts forth the prince's choice, we'll win fame and recognition. Something we could really use right now, actually, because we're kind of broke. Maxwell, you overstep. Sorry. You're broke? There's no shame in being broke, or guess that explains why I had to buy my own dress for the masquerade. <clears throat> I'll say, there's no shame in being broke. I've been broke plenty of times. Thanks, Sirena. 
It's entirely different for us. Do you get money if I marry the prince? Not directly, but we can leverage the prestige to great effect. It would be best to get that leverage before others find out our situation. In the circles we run in, if word got out of our financial ruin, it would be a scandal. But our name is still worth something in Cordonia. At the very least, we can introduce you to the right people, get you invitations to the right events. I only regret that we can't offer you more. Speaking of which, have you prepared for tomorrow's event? Event? That's the Derby. You know what a Derby is, right? A Derby is a fancy horse race. Very good. It'll be your first opportunity to make an impression on the press. They'll be covering the event. They don't get a lot of opportunities to see the royals, so they'll jump at this chance. Oh, I assume they're important then. Yes, very. Everyone in Cordonia will be influenced by what they write about you. We're a monarchy, but we serve the people. You'll need their approval if you're going to become queen. Speaking of which, you should consider your attire for tomorrow. The queen will be present at the derby, and the right outfit will go a long way to earning her favor. I recommend going for a derby look that's modern to impress the queen. I'll keep that in mind. I've made an appointment for you in the morning at the boutique already. We will speak more tomorrow, right before we head out for the derby. Good night. The next morning, you enter the dress boutique and find Olivia putting on her outfit for the derby. Oh, I'm surprised to see you here. I thought you'd have gone by home by now. Surely you've realized that you don't have a chance at winning. Olivia, surely you've realized you can't intimidate me, there's a bird nesting in your hair, or you don't need to hurt others to protect yourself. I'll say you don't need to hurt others to protect yourself. Huh? I... It's okay. You don't have to say anything. Look, I know we're set up to be rivals, but that doesn't mean we have to dislike each other. But, Liam... Whatever else is going on, we don't have to hurt each other. I don't know what kind of game you're playing, Sirena, but you, you're not going to fool me. Olivia turns away coolly and strides towards the door, but then pauses. Look, I know you're probably going to embarrass us all with your lack of fashion sense later, but... Try to avoid doing that. You've probably never been to a derby, but you really must look the part. A runway-worthy ensemble is going to get you noticed by the press, but that's just my recommendation. Uh-huh. Is this like the last time you gave me advice? No, I... Never mind. Forget it. I'll see you at the races later, and I won't be holding back. Olivia walks out of the boutique, and you turn to survey the dresses. Hmm. Olivia says the press will like something runway-worthy. But Bertrand wants me to wear something modern to impress the queen. Alright, these are the dress options. Hmm. 
I'll stop right there for right now. Okay. Dang. Well, I'll see you guys in the next video. It just closed out. Peace out, guys.